How to hook up speakers to your home audio equipment up next. This video is going to be broken up into three different sections. The first section is going to be how to pick out your wire. The second section is going to be how to prepare that wire. And the third section will be how we make all of those connections. This video has chapters. So if you need to skip ahead, look down below. There will be links in the description for all the things that I'm going to be talking about today. There are so many options and specs, it's sometimes hard to know what you need. Speaker wire comes in pairs. One set of wires is for one speaker. The two wires are connected to two binding posts or terminals, and this makes one complete connection. One for the positive binding posts and one for the negative binding posts. Speaker wire also comes in different colors, lengths, and sizes. Speaker wire uses a sizing system called gauge. If you're shopping for wire, you may come across a term called AWG with a number after that. Essentially, the smaller the number, the larger the gauge of wire. For instance, this is 16 gauge wire. This is 10 gauge wire. Honestly, if you have tight spaces and you're not running very long runs like 20 or 30 feet, you're probably gonna be okay with 16 gauge wire. But if you like that thicker gauge and maybe you have some more difficult to drive speakers, you could go with something like a 10 or a 12 gauge. The color doesn't really matter, but my preference is shielded speaker wire versus the transparent or see-through cables. I don't have any of those cables to show you because I hate them. Shielded cables have a PVC jacket over both wires, but each wire itself is wrapped in a colored PVC jacket as well. This makes it easier to tell which wire goes where. And if you're color deficient like me, it keeps you from cussing a lot. All right, so we're, we have our wire. Now we need to get ready to be able to make the connection. So we're gonna prepare the wire. So once you have the wire in your hand, you need to strip the end back so that they can connect to a home theater receiver, an integrated amplifier, a standalone power amplifier. You will need to be able to strip back the PVC jacket from the wires on both ends of the cable. You could use some scissors or pliers, but the best way to do this is with some wire strippers. I use these Klein Tool wire strippers. If you're using wire strippers like me, you need to find the stranded side notch that matches the gauge wire you have. Place the wire through the closed strippers and rotate some. Then use your thumb and forefingers to push the strippers and that will pull the jacket off. If you're like me, you really appreciate convenience. That being the case, I almost always use what are called banana plugs. They just make things easier and I think they look nice too. Just take that little part we stripped and push it through the one end of the unscrewed banana plug. Fan out the strand and then screw the top down. Now we just need to connect the wire to our speakers and our component. This looks different depending on whether you're using bare wire or you're using banana plugs. So I'll go through each type of connection along with how to connect it to a given device like the home theater receiver or an amp or a stereo. Normally you just connect the black colored cable to the black terminal and then the same with the red. Your wire may have a range of colors. The terminals on the back of your component may also have different colors on it, besides just red and black. Being, as I mentioned before, color deficient, this makes me very unhappy. The workaround that I have always found is to connect the darker color to the black terminal and the lighter color to the red terminal, or not black. So if we start with connecting a home theater receiver, typically I start wiring the front, left, and right speakers. 
for bare wire connection, unscrew the terminal. If you're using thicker wire, make sure that you open that up as much as you can. You will need to thread the wire between the plastic guard and the terminal pillar in the middle. I usually curve my wire to make it a little bit easier to thread in. Once you have most of the exposed wire in, you can screw that terminal down. Make sure that it is tightened down so that it doesn't come loose. For banana plugs, just plug it into the middle of the hole. I would make sure that the terminal is screwed down so the terminal itself isn't loose, but that's it, you're done. For an integrated amplifier or stereo, it's a little bit easier with the bare wire. Typically, you just have a left and right speaker terminals. Just unscrew the terminals, and usually you would see a hole in the middle of the terminal to thread the wire through. Thread the exposed wire and then tighten down the terminal or binding post. With banana plugs, once again, just plug it in, you're done. Standalone power amplifiers are pretty much identical to either process that we've done, depending on what kind of binding posts are available and what type of wire you're using via the connection. Next, we just need to hook up our speakers. So I grab some of my ELAC speakers. If you're using bare wire, just unscrew the binding posts and similarly use the hole in the terminal. or just skip all that and use banana plugs. You sensing a theme? Oh, that's it. That's the basics of connecting wire to your components. So if you enjoyed the video, if it was helpful to you, please feel free to subscribe and to like the video and comment with any questions or any other videos you'd like to see. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.